Future Earth is going to make a major contribution in this space, we have to recognize not only the roots of our global change programs and the hard science bias inherent in that history, but we also have to reach out and engage the structures already present. From IPBS, to the Natural Capital Project, to WAVES, to TEAB, to SIA, to all the others that are already in this space trying to articulate the relationship between uh, what is happening in nature and how humans value uh, that natural capital that we depend on. You know, what, what I would love to see out of this workshop and what I'd love to support is, um, you know, to help us to set boundaries and definitions so that the emergence of this Knowledge Action Network can provide value into this complex ecosystem. We need to gather a round of experts to determine not just how we define it, but also to put it in a bigger, in a broader context, what makes sense for Future Earth to tackle, where does it make sense to position ourselves so that we're really useful for what's going on in sustainability science. So I'm very excited about this workshop because it's been put together by Future Earth and Future Earth is an interdisciplinary network um, that has representation all around the world and rather importantly that brings together many different uh, relevant sciences, social science, political science, environmental science, um, eco economics and has links to the policy world and because natural assets is such an important concept, um, I think Future Earth is a way to bring that interdisciplinary science to bear if we can get the um, common understanding of what we mean by the terms and how to use them. So these are my operating definitions. Natural capital is, and I think this is broadly consistent with what's in the paper, natural capital is the stock from which useful goods and or benefits come flow. So it's comparable conceptually to stocks of human or financial capital. And that means you should be able to put asset registers and balance sheets together around natural capital, which is what you want to do if you're going to bring it into the into line with what we do with financial capital, uh, human capital and so on. And natural assets then are the components of natural capital that are owned or managed. So they're the bits that you can actually manipulate uh, or, or um, account for or be responsible for, they're the units for management if you like, um, and defining and circumscribing them is necessary. I thought one of the things that was very interesting about that effort, um, which is this document that I hold in my hand, was that there was really no consensus about the concept of natural assets. It has so many meanings so many, to so many different groups and in function of different goals that we may have as a community. This workshop mainly discussed the two important concepts, that is natural capital and natural assets. And I see that these concepts uh, used over a period of time in many disciplines, and now particularly in sustainability science and also in the discourse of sustainable development. So this is very important, you know, for the future evolvement of the science and also for the practical purposes. That's what I see. There's a lot of talk here in this workshop. It's not just about facts, it's also about how we see these facts. I think there are too many biologists in here. Right, so what I'm concerned about with this whole drive to create a new layer, a new level of evaluation for nature, is this kind of effect. Okay? This is two groups of people negotiating over natural assets. Do both groups understand fully this very complex technocratic activity of nature valuation? Can both groups, the experts, the policymakers, the people, can they all understand this? Can they all interact with it equally? Or does it inherently create a level of complexity that makes it, in a sense, an unequal kind of relationship? And one thing that I thought, I've been making some schemes here, um, that might at least work a little bit to reconcile the different uh, visions uh, here is that there is a number of there is a there is a number of tension zones. There is a tension zone between long term, short term. There is a tension zone between hard data, scientific relationships on the one hand, and on the other hand, the cultural fluxes, as I would call it. Then, of course, some of the early writings in this area, this concept of the total value of nature, really damaged the concept, because the total value of nature is by definition infinite. 
there wasn't nature, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be having a discussion about that. Okay. And so, but, but having said that, the marginal, in other words, the incremental value and accepted to be partial value of nature has turned out to be an incredibly powerful conceptual tool uh, which has gained traction in places where we were never actually you know, part of the discussion. And so just a, a final word on, on accounting systems for natural assets. This is happening while we sit here and debate. Right? So in other words, the, the world of practice, in a sense, is ahead of the world of, of theory. So we need to be able to societally come to goal-oriented and equitable decisions between all kinds of different partners and all kinds of different spaces and societal levels, and, right? But to do that, you know, it's a process of navigating trade-offs, negotiations, hard decisions, right? And to do that, this is sort of why, why does future Earth need to exist, why do we need to exist? Because we would argue that you need knowledge to be able to marshal, to bring to the table to make those kinds of decisions. So if you think about, um, you know, what those types of knowledges might be, you know, you guys have all seen this before, but if you break it down, it's like, we need knowledge on the system, we need the knowledge on the current uh, challenges and opportunities, we need target knowledge, we need target knowledge about the goals that we want to achieve. And these are all things that we as a scientific community can do, and it's different kinds of knowledge. And then you have the sort of transfer transformation knowledge, you know, that is like towards what we are, what are the solution spaces. And I think if we think about it like that, we get away from this kind of um, uh, conflictual situation of sh 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 should we think about it this way or should we think about it that way. We all have a common goal, which is that, all right? And the important stuff is actually the expansion of it rather than the, 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 the hook. I think the hook w it works for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a, lots of critiques you can associate with it. But if we focus on that, then that matters a lot less. And then look, we must understand that there are a diversity of intellectual approaches to this problem. Okay? And we don't have to force them all into the same box or pick a winner. 